Good morning, I'm Minister Laverne Phillips Andrews of the Rose Hill Missionary Baptist Church, where my pastor and the founder is the Reverend Dr. Shelby L. Tate Sr. I am here this morning to give our Sunday School lesson review. Now I'm asking all of you to pray along with me because it is my first time. Um, we are doing the lesson for Sunday, August the 23rd, 2020. The subject of our lesson this morning is Taming the Tongue. Our devotional reading is found in Isaiah 50, 4 to 11, and the background scripture is James 3, 1 through 12. Our key verse today is, the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindled. That's found in James 3rd chapter 5th verse. I am going to read a few of the verses. It's starting off saying, my brethren be not many masters knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships which though they be so great are driven of force wing, excuse me, fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. What I would like to say today is that speaking about the tongue, when our lesson says taming the tongue, that is one thing that is very different and very difficult for some of us sometimes. We have a, 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 um, a, a way of going about saying different things. Some things may be good and some things may be bad. We really have to watch ourselves as we go along each and every day because sometimes people will come to us and it will allow us to use that thing in our mouth called the tongue to speak out to them if it's a negative or if it's a positive. We can do lots of things with this tongue. We can turn people away or we can bring people to us. The tongue, we can say that we love someone one day and the next day we can use it to say that we hate someone. In our lesson today that we are speaking of diff different consequences of speaking with the untamed tongue. We're given a relationship between the lack of wisdom and the untamed tongue. The longer we live, the more acutely we are aware of the power of the tongue to destroy. From the days when we hurled school, schoolyard taunts or insults on were we the receiving end or those, we realize the power of words to hurt or to damage. Every generation seems to learn this lesson the hard way. Consider, for example, the impact of social media in the world in general and in the church in particular. Sometimes we can come into the church and it depends on where our minds are. We may want to sit in a particular area or a particular seat. Sometimes people will sit the same place and then we can walk in the church and see someone sitting in that spot where we normally sit and immediately our attitude changes. We have to be careful because sometimes even under our breath we may say something with that tongue. With fingers typing as an extension of the tongue, Christians argue sharply with each other about faith, politics, etc. in publicly visible Facebook threads. We know how Facebook is today. Lots of us will put things on Facebook and like our pastor has said about Facebook, it's something that you really have to be careful with. Prominent ministers and authors quarrel with each other on Twitter. Speaking of Twitter, we know that we have a president that spends a whole lot of time on Twitter. Sometimes things uh, can get us upset and have us whirling in our minds and trying to figure out why would one say such things. Our relationships are strained and broken and ill-considered tweets that are in the, that area. What will the Bible writers 
say about such, such practices. We really have to be careful with what we say with this tongue of ours. It's good when we can uh, concentrate on making sure that we are saying things that are pleasing to others because people, we have to be concerned about each other. We have to be able to show the love of God when we are speaking. It, it is very important to us to use this tongue for good and not for bad and not for evil because it is not flattering speech in these days. We cannot do things that are gonna cause people not to want to hear or listen to us. Just like I'm up here speaking today, you do not want to hear me saying bad things or saying wrong things with this tongue. You want to hear me saying pleasing things and things that are encouraging. Because in these times, I like to say to the saints, we need each other. We need to hear each other say something that is going to uplift us because we are, a lot of us are burdened down and we don't know what to do and what to say each and every day of our lives. Lots of us, it's, it's important for us to speak from the heart because your heart is what is going to tell you what to do. Indeed, the heart and the tongue are used in poetic passages to stand parallel to one another. Proverbs 10 and 20 says, the tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. In the Acts, Second chapter 26 verse, it says, Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Biblical writers use the imaginary of the tongue, excuse me, of the heart, to speak of what defines and reveals our true inner nature. That's one thing that will come out. Your true nature will come out when you are speaking, because it's exactly what your heart is feeling. In the same way, the tongue is more than just a part of the body. The tongue is equated with speech, of course, but James' insight extends beyond that. How one uses the tongue reveals the nature of the heart as motives are connected with speech and actions. I hope that you have received something out of our lesson today, and I thank you for listening to me and thank you for taking the time. And we are Rose Hill Missionary Baptist Church where the Reverend Dr. Shelby L. Tate Sr. is our pastor. If you are interested in making a contribution or sending love gifts to our pastor and wife, you are welcome to do so. And you can find that on our website. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. Thank you, Lord, for all of your people. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought us from a mighty long way, and we know you are continuing, Lord, to be with us. Continue, Lord, to guide us, uplift us, build us up where we are torn down. Touch our hearts, forgive us for our sins. You know about us, Lord, because you made us. Help us to pay attention to the words that come out of our mouth, because we know that the tongue is very important. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for all that you have done, all that you're about to do. We thank you for all of your blessings, Lord. Continue to touch in the mighty name of Jesus. Continue to touch all those that have been uh, dealt uh, with having to deal with death in their families, the bereaved families, Lord, because we know this pandemic has really ravaged our nation. Heavenly Father, just bless in the mighty name of Jesus that you may continue to be with us, stay with us, guide us, and protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you.